the first days of fistfights and visits to the principal's office and local precinct had frazzled her nerves so bad that Matt assured her that he was going to do everything in his power to avoid any further confrontation and for her not to worry. Because of the traumatic experience of their father's passing, the kids were very protective of their mother and had decided to do whatever they could to make her life easier. So Matt didn't mind coming home earlier and missing out on after-school activities and walking away from a fight if it would give his mother some peace of mind. So on the day Matt didn't arrive home on time, Denise was beside herself with fear and rushed to the school, all the while afraid she was going to pass her son lying on the street in a bloody heap. When she arrived at the school, she had no problem getting into the school because all the security guards knew her since she made it her business to get to know everyone in authority at the kid's school. When she asked if he had seen her son, he smiled and pointed her toward the gymnasium where he informed her Matt was having basketball practice. Feeling relief that her son was not hurt and anger that he was breaking his curfew without her permission, Denise headed toward the gym with fire in her eyes. She was almost to the gymnasium door when it suddenly swung open and out walked her son and a very handsome man that she soon found out was the school's basketball coach. The coach had just said something funny to Matt, and he was laughing when he spotted his mother. His smile slowly faded when he saw the look of anger in his mother's furious face. He stopped walking and stood facing his mother, not saying a word, as the coach looked at the two of them, sensing trouble. What time are you supposed to be home? She asked through clenched teeth. Ma, I was just going to call you. What time are you supposed to be home? No later than 3.45. What time is it? Ma, I know I was supposed to call you, but the coach, what time is it? She asked again, taking a step closer to her son. Instinctively, Matt took a step backward, knowing what kind of trouble he was in and what his mother was capable of. He knew he was in a much worse position than when he was being threatened by the school bullies. At least he would be able to fight them back. With his mother, all he could do was duck and pray it would all be over soon. It's 4.40, he answered, sounding small and embarrassed that he was getting a grilling in front of his coach. Remembering how he'd had to talk Matt into staying and practicing, Will felt responsible for the trouble the young man was in and attempted to help. Mrs. Jones, I'm Coach Banyan, and excuse me, I'm talking to my son. I'll deal with you in a minute. You know all the problems you've been having lately, and you know I would be worried out of my mind if you didn't get home on time. But still, you decide to be so selfish and stay after school and play basketball. As Denise had been speaking, she never raised her voice and she was slowly advancing on her son, who was too afraid to retreat from her for fear of making her angrier. When she was about two feet from her son, she stopped talking and stood looking up at him as he was at least two feet taller than she was. They stood looking at each other, not saying a word, not blinking, and barely breathing when out of the blue, Mrs. Jones swung her right arm and slapped her son full across the face. So stunned was Coach Banyan by the sudden action, he was rendered speechless and motionless when 
ordinarily he would intervene in cases of any physical abuse. When he was able to think again, he took a step toward Mrs. Jones to prevent any further action in case any more was intended when she suddenly spun and looked at him with a steely look in her eyes that stopped him dead in his tracks. Mr. Banyan, this is my son. When I give him instructions, I'm used to having them obeyed. When you leave this building, you are going to get into your car and drive safely home while my son has to walk the streets alone. Don't ever tell my son to go against my word again, or I will see you in court. Not giving the coach a chance to reply, she turned to her son, said, let's go, and walked out of the school. Will had never seen such fire and grit in a woman, and his respect for this single mother flew off the charts. He didn't meet her in the usual conventional manner, but he knew he had to get to know this woman. Not since his first wife had he felt such a strong attraction to a woman, but this woman in this city, in this school, with this strong will was definitely going to be a challenge. And the fact that they were from different ethnic backgrounds was just the tip of the iceberg. Will knew a little about her background from the school records of her children. She was a very intelligent, beautiful, recently widowed woman that, as far as he could tell, was not ready for anything but a platonic relationship. Having traveled that road, Will well understood the need for a time of healing and was not about to jeopardize any future possibilities he might have. In the meantime, there was this season's trophy to win. Bringing his mind back to the present, Will focused his attention on the young men running around the basketball court and saw that Matt and his team were leading by a 16-point margin. Yes, it was going to be a good season, a really good season. Coach Banyan wasn't the only one watching Matt and Rife rule the court. Jeremy and Danielle, arch enemies of Matt's sisters, were watching from the sidelines with totally unchristian-like thoughts in their mind. God, Matt looks good in those shorts, said Jeremy in a hoarse whisper. I'll bet he looks even better out of them, teased Danielle. They both laughed and gave each other a high five, picturing a naked Matt in their minds. Who's the new dark chocolate bar? Asked Danielle, motioning towards Rife. That's the new guy I was telling you about. Yummy. I hear Jell and her crew are out to bag him. Well, Jell and her crew ain't here now, and I am, she says slyly. Well, good luck with that. You can have him and all the other guys on the court. As for me, I'm not letting Matt get away from me this year, vowed Jeremy, taking out her makeup kit and applying a fresh coat of lip gloss. You love punishment, don't you? What? You know his sisters don't like you, especially Ned. So what? I don't like her either, and Matt will be mine. All I'm saying is, the last time you were trying to get with Matt, she was the reason it didn't work out. I hate her. She thinks she's better than everybody just because she goes to church and sings on the choir and, and, and what? Gets better grades than you, wears better clothes than you, is better looking than you, has better hair than you. What is your problem? Where do you get off? I was only kidding. I was just trying to get you to hear how stupid you sound. So what she goes to church? So, so what she sings on a choir? So what? Does that make her better than us? No way. We're every bit as good as she is. You're doggone right we are. As a matter of fact, 
We're going to prove it to her. I know that look. You've got something up your sleeve. You bet I do. First, promise you'll be down no matter what I say. What am I promising to? Promise me. Okay, I promise. But you better not have me doing anything stupid or dangerous. I swear, Danielle. Don't worry. I'm your girl. First, we're going to introduce ourselves to tall, dark, and handsome after the game. Then we'll strike up a conversation with Matt and bring up church. Bring up church? Why? You know Matt, his sisters, and his mother are regular churches. So the only way to get to him is to be interested in his church, right? Well, yeah, maybe. Come on, Sherry. You know I'm right. If you want Matt, you got to go to church. What? Screamed Sherry me, jumping to her feet. Will you sit down and let me finish? You don't have to go for long, just for a month or two, just long enough to make him think you're really sincere and bang, he's yours. Sherry me sat quiet for a while, pondering what her friend was suggesting to her. And just what are you going to be doing while I'm sitting up in church for two months? Relax. I'll be right there with you. You will? I told you I was your girl. Again, she sat quiet and thought over the plans, looking for another way to get what she wanted, but realizing that with this boy, church was the only route. So you'll come with me every Sunday? I'll come with you every Sunday. And what will you do about Mr. Dark Chocolate? Well, I saw him with Matt earlier, and they seem to be friends. Maybe Matt will get him to start going to church with him. You know how Matt is. He's always recruiting for his church and his quiet. Maybe we can get two birds with one stone. Maybe. It's worth a try. Okay, you got a deal. The girls shook hands and turned their attention back to the game. Suddenly, Sheremy burst out into a fit of laughter that she couldn't seem to control. What is so funny? I just pictured Vets and Nets' face when they see us walk into their church next Sunday morning. And with that, both girls broke out into Gales of laughter that brought looks of annoyance from the other young people standing next to them. Just then, the coach blew his whistle, signaling the end of the tryouts, and everyone headed to the court to congratulate the winning team. Good game, fellas, good game. Everyone that will play on this year's team will be posted on the bulletin board tomorrow after six period. Everyone out, boys. Go change and see you all tomorrow. Good night. The coach announced to the sea of anxious faces that surrounded him on the gym floor. Oh, man. I thought we were going to find out today. I'm going to be on pins and needles all night, complained Rife. Relax, man. I already told you you're in. Come on. Let's go change. Do you need any help? Asked a soft, sweet voice that made both boys slowly turn with eyes wide open. Oh, hey, Sheremy, what's happening? You looked real good today, Matt. Thanks. Hello, Danielle. Hey, Matt, who's your friend? Asked Danielle while looking Rife up and down. Oh, this is Rife. Rife, this is Danielle and Sheremy. Hello, Danielle. Hello, Sheremy. Pleased to meet you. Oh, please call me Sherry. She's Danny, and the pleasure is all mine. Matt rolled his eyes and started pushing Rife towards the locker room. Come on, partner. We're out of here. Later, ladies. Why the hurry, guys? Matt, we haven't had a chance to talk since June. I want to know how your summer was, asked Danny, inching closer to Matt. My summer was great. How was yours? He answered while steadily moving away from the girls. Rife was enjoying the whole cat and mouse scene between Matt and the two girls and couldn't wait to hear the whole story. Rife, I hear you're new to our school. Are you new to the city as well? Asked Sherry while digging into her pocketbook. Yeah, I just moved to the city from North Carolina. 
Oh, that would explain your sexy accent. Um, I would be honored to show you the sights. What do you say? As polite and helpful as Sheremy was trying to appear, there was something about her that made Rife very uncomfortable. Come on, Rife, we have to run. See you later, Danny, Matt said, grabbing Rife's arm and pulling him into the boys' locker room. The girls looked at the closed door with both frustration and amusement.